What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. Today, it's time for another monthly segment of Ask Shelly How to Say It. These special episodes are designed to help you find the words and the phrases to address those sticky situations that can arise as you lead your team. On today's episode, I'm here to help you navigate the sticky situation of needing to fire a family member or a friend. There's so much at stake here, but you can do this. And hey, if you missed earlier segments of Ask Shelly How to Say It, you can scroll back a bit in your podcast app. A new episode of this style arrives into your queue on the last Tuesday of every month. And one more thing, the next round of the Leadership Lab starts next week. So if you're someone who's been holding back from applying, here is your last chance. If you miss this enrollment, you'll have to wait until next year. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a service-based business owner who's wanting to elevate your capabilities to lead your team, you're in the right place. Running a business, casting your vision, and shifting from practitioner to CEO takes courage, structure, and the support of a team, but not just any team. So if you're thinking that because you own a successful business and you've hired people to come and join you, then you really should know how to lead them, stop beating yourself up. And instead, stick with me and stay open to learning how you can improve your leadership skills here every single week. The Stacking Your Team podcast was launched over four years ago as a companion resource to the award-winning Biz Chicks podcast hosted by Natalie Ekdahl, our CEO and founder, who has been sharing her incredible free podcast resource for women entrepreneurs since 2014. Natalie and I both have a big heart for service-based business owners who are juggling life at home, in their community, their industry, and of course, in their business. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at BizChicks Inc., where I lean on my 25 plus years of experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation. I'm here to help you build a diverse and agile team of high-performing people who have a passion for winning and a deep desire to transform the lives of the clientele that you serve. So let's get to it with this reminder that our long-standing listeners will certainly recognize. The team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Okay, before we begin today, I want to encourage you that if you've hired a family member or a friend, I feel for you. I'm not a fan of this, but I know it happens. Legacy businesses or family-owned businesses have been around for centuries. Years ago, that's all there was. And more recently, we've all seen the series Succession that absolutely shines a light on the dark side of family-run businesses. Yikes. But sometimes it does work out, especially if everyone is mature enough to be open to feedback and open to the idea that just because you're related to the CEO or have a unique relationship with the CEO, that they too will be held accountable to performance outcomes, and personal development, just like everyone else on the team. Now, I know it can be hard to host these adult conversations, especially with people that you have a relationship with outside of work. 
Yet you knew that when you hired them. So here you are. The first thing to note is that performance systems and tools that you would use for anyone on your team must also be leveraged for your family and friends who work there too. If you exempt your family members and friends from your normal ways of providing clarity and accountability and feedback, it will always feel like favoritism to them and their peers, and rightly so. Now, it gets sticky because you likely know more about what's going on in the lives of those people than you do of other people on your team. Yet, this doesn't mean that they get a special pass or reduced expectations because of it. You may also find that some people will not want to join your team once it's known that you have family members and friends working in the business. You see, there's definitely a negative stigma attached to this. People anticipate drama and unfair play and most commonly favoritism. So that's something you might want to think about as you stack your team. If you do choose to hire family and friends, you can do things differently and demonstrate to your whole team all of your clients and your partners, that you can lead family and friends and you can fire family and friends too. So how do you do it and what do you say when you've got to fire someone that you have a relationship with outside of work? After all, firing this person can definitely damage your relationship and the subsequent relationships that are linked to this person if you don't do it well. No one wants those awkward Thanksgiving dinners or weekend barbecues that are fraught with uncomfortableness all around. You would also want to check in with your local state or provincial guidelines on terminating someone's employment with your own employment lawyer or HR consultant. At BizChicks, we recommend to all of our clients to have both of these resources available to them as a small business owner. They should be local to you, and you should definitely send them some sort of holiday gift each year, regardless of whether you use their services or not, because you want to maintain your professional relationships with these very two important experts. Okay, let's do this. Now, as per usual, on these episodes, I'm going to give the long version of the conversation, and you can pull from it what you think is best for your situation and your team culture. I'm going to share two different scenarios with you today. In scenario number one, the friend has outgrown her value at your business. She's a good performer, but your business is growing so fast that you need a different level of support than what she's able to provide. She also doesn't really want to learn anything new and provide any higher level of skills and knowledge to you in the business. She wants everything to be as per usual and continue to maintain the status quo. It's time for her to go. Yet, she was your friend before she joined you and you often spend time together outside of work still. Her friendship is meaningful to you. And you don't want to lose her as a friend. You simply know that she's no longer a fit for what you need in your business. So here's a suggestion for your conversation with the friend that needs to be released. Thanks so much for meeting with me today, Jennifer. I've been wanting to have this conversation with you for some time now, and it will most likely feel awkward for the both of us. Before you joined the company, we were friends, and I'd like to think we still are. You've been able to help us get the business off the ground and your ability to set spending plans that kept our costs at a reasonable level to this point are so appreciated. We've talked about how fast the company's growing and that in order to stay competitive and agile enough to meet the demands of all of this, we need a different leadership team structure. You've been pretty clear about what you want to do here and what you don't want to do. I've listened, we've talked further, and yet we're still at a crossroads. You don't want to expand your financial expertise any further, and yet that's exactly what the business needs. I hear you on that, and I want to support you on that decision too. This week, I'm actively going to begin a search for a CFO. It's the role that we now need to fill, and you're better suited for something else. Would you agree? Yes, it's hard to say out loud, what it is that you want for a career when you know we can't actually provide it for you. You really are so great at providing those foundational financial skills that a new business needs. 
But we are long past that. And now we need someone who can guide our financial decisions more strategically and also position us to receive grants and sponsorships, some better loan options, and a deeper tax preparation. I know this isn't what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you open to listening to a few options for you that would enable you to find a new position doing what you do best? Okay, great. We will support you on either of these options, Jen. Okay, here's the first option I have to share with you. We could take some time to craft an exit strategy for you, releasing you by the end of the month. It would give you a bit of a cushion as you look for your next opportunity, and I'm prepared to provide you with an additional month's salary. Of course, I'd also provide you a recommendation, and we could put our heads together and come up with a list of local small businesses that could absolutely use your help right now. I can also help you craft some outreach strategies to position yourself really well for these opportunities. The other option is this. You could move forward as soon as this week, and I'd have Peggy freed up to focus on your transition. She could take care to help you wrap up things. We could then find some time over the next few weeks to get together to map out a plan for you to find another role. So what option feels like your best step, Jen? Yes, Peggy will help, and I know that your next few days here will feel odd, and yet it can also start to feel very freeing knowing that you're about to start something new. I really appreciate your professionalism here, Jennifer, and we're here to help you with this transition into your next best career opportunity. Let's make this happen for you. Now, regarding Jennifer, you heard that I gave her two options so that she feels in control of the outcome. You also heard the options I gave her both included terminating her employment. The difference was when she would actually leave. All in all, it was going to happen within weeks. Now, you know that I'm a fan of the same day release because I think it adds complexity and confusion to everyone to have this team member hanging around waiting for their end date. It can add so much stress to an already strained relationship. And personally, I think it's mean to have someone to stay in a role that they're not doing well in for any longer. Even though there are the best of intentions of providing the slow release for this person, it can still really mess with their well-being. It can also add a ton of security, confidentiality, and reputation risks if they choose to take a highly negative stance on your decision to release them. So here's another scenario where you need to release a team member and this person just happens to be a family member. There's definitely a sense of concern here because you know that you're going to get some blowback from others in the family about this. You also know that you've done everything you could to help turn the performance around and yet it just didn't work out. They were never quite able to deliver the results required in their role. You offered more coaching, more training, and you restructured the role for a while so they could demonstrate the core duties more consistently before you added on any other responsibilities. You acknowledged them when they did hit the mark, wanting to reinforce this instead of that. They've resented you at times and often confronted you about being unreasonable and expecting too much and asking you to get off their back. You're sensing the rest of the team is tolerating more than you're even aware of, and they're watching you, wishing you'd release this person, but not holding out on it because after all, this person is family. You're done losing sleep over this and you're ready to take the heat because you know that you've tried and this team member has tried too to make it work. But it just isn't. And so it's time. Here we go. Anne, thanks for meeting with me today. We need to have a conversation about your position here. I've decided it's time to release you and let you find a role that fits better with your skill set and your own desires for what you really want to do as a career. Today will be your last day. When you tell Jeremy about this, you can assure him that we've both tried to make this work and you deserve a role that you can thrive in. You may have already been thinking about doing something totally different, have you? Mm -hmm. Well, over the next few weeks, some ideas may come to you, Anne. 
This can really become your chance to try out a few different things or even start a business of your own. I'm prepared to provide you with a month's salary to help cushion your time searching for another opportunity. I'll take care of your personal belongings and have those delivered to your house later today. I've prepared a document for you to have a look at that outlines the details of your release. I'll give you a few minutes to review it. And I know this outcome was not what we had planned when Jeremy suggested that you join us. However, we were able to provide you with some core skills that you'll always have, and we appreciate what you've been able to do alongside your peers here. It's time to let you move forward. Now, in this scenario, you are doing all of the classic best practices for releasing someone from your employment. It's brief. You are confirming for them that you've made the decision and you're encouraging them to consider this as a way to find their true calling rather than staying stuck in a role that they're not thriving in. In this conversation, you're moving them forward that same day and also assuring them that you'll take care of their personal belongings so that there's no need to walk back into the workplace or into her personal workspace to retrieve her stuff. That action alone can cause so much stress, shame, and worry for anyone who's being terminated. I highly recommend you pre-plan for this. You don't want to make the person feel any worse than what they already do by having to face their peers as they walk out on their last day. So here's the thing. It should never be a surprise for anyone that they're about to lose their job. Why? Because you should have been coaching them all along to improve their performance by providing clear direction and feedback. Usually, being released from a role that you're not doing well in comes with a lot of relief. You see, the person knows that they aren't performing well. And all those adult conversations that you've had with them, all the action plans, all the check-in meetings, can confirm to the person that you and your team have truly tried to support them. They can walk away knowing that this offers them a chance to have a role that is the best fit for them elsewhere. Your role during these uncomfortable conversations is to keep it short, keep it factual, leave your emotions out of it, even though you are related to them or have a special relationship with them outside of work. At this moment, in that room, during this conversation, you are their leader. So you need to maintain that role throughout, even though it feels so awkward. So as we close out for today, what will you do to apply what you just learned here on the podcast about firing a family member or a friend? Here's a suggestion. Be cautious about hiring friends and family. These personal relationships add another layer of complexity to your team culture and your ability to lead. I'm not saying it never works out well, but there are risks associated with it. When you are blessing and releasing someone from your company, focus on doing the lead up work to help the person turn their performance around. Document everything and frequently ask your team member what looks like help to them. Add more touch points to their work plan so they know that they have additional support from you or their direct leader and be open to feedback that they're going to share with you too. The underpinning of team development is personal development and successful leaders know how to pour into their team members, even when the person is being difficult or even when the person is woefully disappointing you and their peers. Learning how to treat people with dignity and respect Throughout the performance management process is a skill set that will serve you really well as your business grows. Here are some other episodes that might be helpful to you, and all the links are in the show notes. Episode 151 is all about firing should never be a surprise. Episode 127 is how to recover from a bad hire. Episode 91 is an on-air coaching call How to Know It's Time to Fire a Team Member with Laura Cross. And episode 62, Can I Hire My Friends and Family? If you'd like to belong to a place 
where these kinds of conversations are talked openly about with support from me and some incredible peers who have made some hiring snafus of their own, you should consider joining us in the Leadership Lab. Help with hiring and firing, as well as inspiring your team to thrive at work, are foundations that are available to you within the Leadership Lab with our trainings and our one-to-one strategy sessions. If you are a service-based business owner with a team of five or more, including remote team members, and you're wanting to uplevel your ability to lead your business and your team, I am personally inviting you to join us. Our first call is next week. So if you are someone who's been holding back from applying, here is your last chance. If you miss this enrollment, you'll have to wait until next year. Here are a few things our members have recently said about their experience in the Leadership Lab. Your leadership trainings are so helpful. My strategy sessions with you are so much help. I know exactly what I need to do next. I'm so excited to see where my business will be in the next six months. I'm so proud of myself for joining this program. Even though I'm across on the other side of the world, I don't feel distant from this group at all. Hearing those kinds of sentiments from our members of the Leadership Lab really, really lights me up. And did you know that being a member of the Leadership Lab comes with perks like one-to-one time with me, incredible nice women to be surrounded by, Your team gets trained too, and you don't have to do it. I do that for you. Insightful and highly practical guest experts, collaboration and referrals, and a chance to share your own expertise with others, ongoing and relevant trainings and resources created just for you. And of course, your Biz Chicks team can't wait to meet you in person at our upcoming retreat. You'll not find another small group coaching program out there for service-based business owners, where you get what you need to elevate your capabilities and your team does too. What you'll get is a small group experience where you always feel like you belong and where you have other women at your fingertips who are genuinely interested in you and your goals. Summertime is a great time to take new action that will set you up for success for the fall, which will ensure you close the year out strong. You will then leap into the new year in a great position for growth. So if you've always wanted more of what you hear in the podcast, it's probably time to come and work with me directly. You can apply at bizchicks.com slash leadership lab or click the links that are in the show notes. I personally read each application and I will circle back with everyone who applies. So I can't wait to learn more about you. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Today.